Warning. The opinions expressed in this video do not represent YouTube associations, agencies, or any particular individuals. They are merely from two guys needing to pass the boredom of their average day lives. Some explicit content may occur in this or future presentations. Viewer discretion may be advised, but ignored if you're into that thing. Hey everybody, I'm Wild Man Wes. And I'm the Big Bad Wolf Benny. And welcome to another edition of the Wild Wolf Show. Well, we're going to do another review. And this one has to deal with something that we have referred to time after time after time after time after time. Throw a couple more times in there, then yes, yep. we're there. We are going to be reviewing the cult film from 1980, Flash! Ah! Gordon. Yes. Yes. And... Not a lot of people like it. I mean, I'm sure. I love it. Oh, I yeah. me too. Oh yeah, it's a guilty pleasure, just like Bloodsport. Yeah. And uh, well, I started off last time, so Benny, All you're right. gonna take over this time. All right, guys. So if you don't know, Flash Gordon is based on a comic strip. So it's been around forever. It's been around since, since about like the '40s. Yeah, the '40s. So I mean, it's been around. So it's probably one of the first movies based on a comic strip. Actually, I want to say um, one of the first ones. A comic strip, not, comic a, comic strip, book. not a comic yeah. book. Yeah, comic strip. Sorry about that. So it's one of the first movies that's based on a comic strip, which is kind of cool if you think about it. So anyway, it starts off. You're on planet Earth. No, wait, actually, you're with Ming. You see Ming looking at a planet, which happens to be our planet. He gets asked, you know, what are you gonna do with this one? I like to play with things a while. So basically, before my annihilation. He starts <laughs> uh, setting off natural disasters, earthquakes. Typhoon, stuff like that. And then you go down to Earth, and you meet Flash Gordon. He's a quarterback for the New York Jets. Played by Sam J. Jones. Jones. Our boy. Yep, and if you don't know who he is, you should know if you've seen the Ted films. He plays yes, himself. Do. So, anyway, we meet him. We meet a female. Oh, 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 thunderstorm. Speaking of natural disasters, I think Ming knows we're doing this episode. We're doing this episode, he knows. It's all right. So, at this point, Flash meets a woman named Dale. So they're flying, all this good stuff. They end up at this laboratory where we meet our doctor. Dr. So, Hans Zarkov. And actually, he's played by Topol, who's well known for a lot of his early work in the 60s and 70s, mainly due to, uh, I believe, Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler on the Roof is what it is. Oh, yeah. So anyway. Still alive to this day. He is. That's a good thing, guys. So anyway, we find out that he's trying to go into space because he knows what's going on. Well, he's got a good idea, and he turns out to be right. So, his assistant decides that this is crazy, and he leaves. So, pretty much, he takes Flash and Dale, because he needs somebody to help operate the ship. So, he pretty much holds them at gunpoint. So, they go into space, blah, 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 blah. They get abducted by Ming ships. They get brought aboard. You see all these, like, other aliens who pretty much just look human, make it easy, who are paying tribute to Ming. And, uh, you know, you can tell everybody doesn't like Ming, but they're just, they don't want to be destroyed by him because he's that powerful. Yep. So Flash Gordon don't know what the hell's going on. He ain't having it, you know. He's that all-American boy. This Ming is a psycho. <laughs> so, and his little monitor overhears it. And, oh, he's got So it, it goes into uh, Flash starts fighting some of his uh, troopers, we'll call them. And, uh, you know, he's holding his own kind of, but he's pretty much just playing football. One of his, uh, Dale actually throws him like a uh, football-shaped, Something. Yeah, and then Zarkov throws him one and hits him right. Well, actually, no, Dale doesn't throw him. Uh, Zarkov does. Zarkov does. He keeps throwing him and throwing him too fast, and then it hits, you know, Flash. So, in Flash the head. is doing good. He's using his quarterback skills to, you know, knock the guys out pretty much. And then, yeah, he gets just too many throws on him too fast, and he gets knocked out. And the cool, funny thing is, though, too, it means like, whatever pills he's on, get them for my soldiers. Yeah. Which I always thought was funny. So, anyway, he gets caught. He gets tried. You mean uh, Ming's daughter. Yeah, Princess Aura. Who uh, just, you know, she's definitely an eye candy sexual person in this movie. And she finds Flash very, very attractive. So she wants to keep him. 
Yeah, basically it's like a pet. I mean, For lack of a better phrase, a I'd, pet. See, I'd be her pet, no problem. Yeah, fair enough, man, fair enough. So anyway, so back to the story. So now, you know, he's being put to death because, you know, well, he stood up to me in front of everybody, so that's a big no-no. So anyway, the princess saves him, makes it look like he dies, you know, because obviously she wants to play with him. Problem with the princess <laughs> is uh, she's kind of, like, hooking up with everybody. Yeah, especially much. um, one of the main characters from Aboria, Prince Baron, who's played by none other than Timothy Dalton. Oh, we've talked one about of our, him. One of our James Bonds. One of my favorite Bonds. I mean, I wouldn't say he's my all-time favorite, but I like the grittiness of the Bond he's, film. He's season. up there with Sean Connery. Yeah, well, well, that's so, that's so, anyway, so he's getting jealous because he sees that, she, you know, the princess has a thing for Flash. So he's getting a little jealous and she keeps, it's, oh, it's no big deal, blah, blah, blah. So, anyway, Dale at this point, uh, Ming finds her very attractive and... She's very cooperative to his, what, like a little dance or whatever he did. He put like a spell on her. Yeah, with his power ring. I mean, so, power ring. It's like every comic book character or any type of comic, everybody's a got a power ring. ring. It's ridiculous. But so, anyways, yeah. he finds her very cooperative to it. She accepts it a lot easier than his people. Being, you know, she's from Earth. So we're going with that. So he's going to marry her. And he's, be, you know, she's getting pampered and she kind of likes it. And then she finds out why she's being pampered, and then she's not having it. And while all this is going on, Dr. Hans Zarkov is taken into a different part of Ming's lair, and he's being brainwashed to become one of his new agents. Ming found, you know, he found out that he was very intelligent, he liked that, he wanted to use that for himself to help conquer Earth. Zarkov doesn't want to have anything to do with it because his mind is everything that he has left, and we'll get into that later on in our top fives, so... So anyway, now, so the princess helps uh, Flash escape, and um, yeah, if they get away, and then there's this whole weird sex scene, telepathy thing going on between Flash, Aurora, and, uh, and Dale. Dale. You gotta be there, we'll talk about yeah. it later. So anyway, they're going to... Um, Aboria, to go talk to, to Prince Baron. Yes. They're going to talk to Prince Baron to try to keep Flash safe, but Prince Baron, like we told you earlier, doesn't want nothing to do with him. In fact, he's trying to kill him. And actually, he pulls a fast one on Princess Aura by saying, yeah, he's just going to keep him detained while they try to go get help from Prince Voltan, the Prince of the Hawkmen, played by Brian Blessed. And one little tidbit of information on that is Brian Blessed actually voiced Prince Voltan in an episode of Road to Europe from Family Guy. It's, oh, I yeah. love, I love, I love Brian Blessed. Uh, we'll Voltan, get into that too. He's probably our favorite character of the movie. Oh, Sorry, yeah. Flash. I mean... He's just funny, like I said, uh, in the whole football scene when he's fighting the guards, uh, Voltan's kind of sitting there with his mace, and every time a guard comes a little too close, he kind of hits him on the head and he's trying not to laugh. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So, yes. But other than that, as um, Prince Baron is basically uh, pulling a fast one on Princess Aura, he sends Flash Gordon down into a little p uh, caged pit into a swamp, and he has one of his little cronies go and try to fool him as well to escape. And actually another little uh, tidbit of trivia, the guy that plays him is none other than Richard O'Brien, the creator of one of my all-time favorite musicals, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's a good one. Richard O'Brien, we salute you, man. We will probably talk about that movie during Shocktoberfest. Oh, we, uh, you bet your ass we which will. Which is uh, Fast and Coming, guys. Uh, yep. We'll tell you more about that uh, at the end of the episode where Shocktoberfest is. If you have any ideas for Shocktoberfest, leave us a comment. We'll definitely do, you know, something for you. And leave you a shout out in the exactly. process. Help us help you. Help us help you. Exactly. So anyway, we're back to the story now. So, Flash is getting conned twice now. He gets back up to Prince Baron and uh, Prince Baron, like, once there's a, on his planet, the way you become, like, a man is you have to put your hand in a stump. There's a death worm in there. So if you get stung by it, you can either suffer and die a slow, painful death, or you can have your choice of being killed, which you, then you're still considered a man. So earlier, before Flash does it, you see one of the males up and coming try to do it. He gets, you know, hit by the creature, and he, you know, he asks to be killed because he doesn't want to suffer. So Prince Baron does it, does not get stabbed, and then Flash finally gets to pull a fast one on him. He puts his hand in there and pretends that he got stabbed. 
Now, Prince Baron being cocky is like, oh, well, do you want me to end your life, you know, so you don't suffer being all arrogant like a prince would be? Then at this point, this is when Flash gets the upper hand, and he's telling him, like, why don't you guys all team up against me? Why you guys, you guys obviously can't beat him one-on-one. -on -one. Why don't you all team up? And they don't know what team up means. And right as this is going on, the Hawkmen come down to Alboria, take Prince Baron, Flash Gordon, and a couple others, and they go back up to Baltan's Air Fortress, where in which they're going to be tried before, you know, a council and decided on what's going to happen, if indeed they survive before they see, you know, Emperor Ming. And Prince Baron decides he has his right to challenge somebody to null and void his sentencing. So he challenges Flash Gordon to a battle on top of a platform over nothingness, outer space. Pretty much. So basically, you fall off, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, too, uh, like we said, Voltan's our favorite character. So the whole time they're fighting, Voltan's cracking jokes, all this stuff, because, I mean, he mm -hmm. thinks he's won. And the remote control. Yes. With the spikes. <laughs> so now Flash Gordon comes on top, and he could have easily let Prince Baron fall. But he picks him up, and even Voltan's like, why would you do that? Your enemy was defeated. He's like, our en we're not enemies. Ming's our enemy. He's like, we all need to team up, and we can beat him. And then, like, everybody starts connecting the dots, and, like, he's right, but a team-up, we need to fucking do it! And as this is going on, Ming's right-hand man, Clytus, comes oh, in Clytus. and tells everybody, you're all coming with us, it's all over, we're destroying this air fortress. Ming has a little, you know, back and forth with Flash Gordon to try to persuade him to stop doing what he's doing, and Flash being the hero, no, I'm not gonna do it. And Ming decides he's going to blow up the Air Fortress as they're taking off for the wedding between him and Dale. Flash escapes, and he teams up with Boltan to attack Ming. We get one of the coolest battles, the air battle. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, so we're coming to the end of the movie. Of course, Dale gets rescued. Uh, Flash wins. He gets the girl. Both of them, technically, right? He gets Princess. I well, mean, that's no, 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 no. Um, Prince Baron and Princess Aura yeah, yeah. become the, the leaders of Mongo, basically. So, pretty much, uh, I mean, it's a happy ending. Everybody gets the girl. Voltan's happy that he got his daughter back. Or is it a happy ending? Because we, do, see, do, the, do, we see the question mark at the, the end. It's a classic. It, it worked in the 80s. It doesn't work now. No. Where you think the villain's defeated, and then you get the question mark, and... Yeah. It only works now as if you leave it open-ended midway through the credits. Yes. Except Green so, Lantern. Yeah. We never got a sequel. So anyway, guys, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's our review on Flash Gordon. It was very brief. We tried to keep it, you know, nice and tame for you this time. I think we did very good, so... I, I, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. So anyway, guys, now we're going to get into our favorite part of the show. It's our good and bad. And before we do that... We actually have an honorable mention that we felt that was both good and bad. We couldn't decide, so no. we decided we'll just give it this honorable mention. Yeah. Or dishonorable, depending on how you look exactly. at it. Exactly. This being said, that pick is the football game. Like I said, it's fun to watch, but at the same time, it, I mean, it was kind of needed to show that Flash Gordon was a capable warrior, I yeah. guess. But at the same time, was it a little goofy, a little campy? Yeah, it's the 80s. Yeah. It's the beginning of the 80s. So and Actually, yes. and I have another little, I don't know if I said it earlier, but a little tidbit of information. Um, Deep Roy, who is the uh, Oompa Loompa that was CGI'd multiple times in the Tim Burton, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, he was actually the little dwarf known as Fellini, the, one of Princess Aura's little pets. And he's jumping up and down while Flash is actually having a good you know, time beating up Ming's you know, mercenaries. So again, we couldn't decide which side this went on, so we'll leave it up to you. Watch the movie, watch the scene, and you let us know down below in the comments what you think it should be on. Because like I said, I like it and I don't like it because at the same time, how do trained soldiers lose to a guy who plays football? Yeah. But again, storytelling, it's needed. Yeah. So we'll go from there. So why don't we do the bad on this one first just because this movie gets yeah. a bad rap? Yeah. So, number five on the bad side of Flash Gordon, we had mentioned at the beginning of the plot, Dr. Hans Zarkov's uh, little associate, or, you know, his little person, you know, with him, uh, Munson. He happens to just kind of jump out of the way when Flash and Dale crash through on a plane through his observatory. We see him jump out of the way. We don't know, 
did he die? I mean, it was, it's did like, he just run away? I mean, or was he unconscious? Know. We never really know. All we know is that Hans Zarkov just says, well, Munson, missed your opportunity. And it's just kind of, so it's, because, a, it's a nitpick kind of thing because it's like, you know. I mean, yeah. He was kind of a throwaway character, but it, he was. Uh, I mean, yeah. he helped, you know, get everything going. That's what we needed, but whatever. Like we said, just a little tidbit, just whatever. It would have been kind of cool to see him at the end if they actually came, came back. back to Earth, yeah. Or maybe a deleted scene, even, you know? Something. Unfortunately, he was a throwaway character anyway, so we don't really care about yeah. him. Number four, the bad side, acting. They were campy. Were they trying to be campy, or is that just the way they were act? It's hard. Yeah, it's I, hard to gauge. And, and on this one, it has to. We really don't want to say. We don't. I honestly, I don't think the acting was that bad. I mean, let's be fair. I watch this movie at least once a month, so I mean, obviously, I don't mind the acting that yeah, bad. Yeah, I mean, for me, personally, but there's certain yeah. characters that just they either overact, they underact, or and, it's just like they just kind of rat one out. But there at the, red the, I mean, and as we said, you know, we put this on the bad list because we really didn't know where to put it. Uh, for me personally, I think it probably had to kind of be a little nod to the original 1939 serial on TV, the black and white of Flash Gordon, and that kind of, Flash, I love you, but we only have 14 hours to save the Earth. It sounds like very, you know, 30s to 50s, even 60s science fiction, where everything was kind so of again, over it's the cool. top. If that's what they were going for, it's cool because it's a nod to the past, and I love when movies that yeah. have like either serials or movies or... TV shows, but they throw nods to it. That's cool. That, but that being said, at least if they weren't doing that, then <laughs> damn, they yeah. At least this movie wasn't as bad as the TV series that came out about what ten years ago, something yeah. like that. It was just god awful. It really got awful. Sorry guys, they can't all be winners. All right, number three on the bad side. I kind of mentioned it earlier when I was giving you the review. Uh, the ship sex. <laughs> So anyway, so at this point, uh, the princess and Flash are escaping on a ship, and she kind of puts this thing around his head to let him speak telepathically to Dale, and the whole time she's like trying to bang him. And she so, was trying to do that beforehand even, yeah. and showing him how to <laughs> do maneuvers in the ship, and it's just, we, we already, we've already established the fact that she's a whore, but you know, but anyway, or a slut, whatever you want to call it, but you Anyway, know. so like, it's just... It's bad because, like, we really don't need it. We already know she's that promiscuous. Yeah. So, but anyway, it was kind of funny because, you know, he's trying to talk to Dale, and he's just like, he's thinking, not even thinking about it, that he's like, oh, this girl's really turned me on, and Dale's like, what? <laughs> Forget I thought it. I wasn't, wasn't thinking about you. you. Wait, what? And it's like, oh, yeah. man, you just shot yourself in the foot so telepathically, anyway, man. It, it was just a little tidbit scene that's like, yeah, really didn't need it. It was it funny, yes, but there's certain scenes just like, if you didn't show us what happened on the ship... I probably would have thought something would have happened anyway because, like we said, she's uh, yeah. kind of all over everybody, which, like I said, I mean, if I was there, yes. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to number two. So number two on the bad side would have to be the possible religious overtones. Okay. Now, before you start, before all the haters and everybody starts, you know, blasting us on our, you know, page in the comment section. We're both Catholics. Yes. But I'm just saying... The, I just happened to notice this at first. I mean, as the movie progresses, you kind of wonder, hmm, is that what they were going for? Maybe it was the fact that maybe I had a couple drinks while watching the movie and, you know, my mind was on other things. Yeah. But, I mean, it started off for me when Zarkov, Gordon, and Dale are all going into Meng's fortress. And while the little monitor orb is fi you know, flying in front of them, you hear Zarkov say, I've got a gun in my pocket. I'll be able to know what to do. And then, you know, Gordon says, oh, it's suicide. What are you going to do? He says, one life to save billions. Now, granted, Superman has said something like that on the same lines. But then again, Superman is considered kind of a Christ-like figure. He is. I mean, they kind of touched on a little bit of Man of Steel when he went to the church and, and talked to his And when friend. Gordon is supposedly executed by gas chamber, he comes back from the dead. Now, granted, the physician that Aura was having a little bit of an affair with Again. pumped him full of something to keep him from dying from the gas. It's a resurrection type sequence. The one, I mean, and I could look the other way on that. However, the main focal point of this moment in the bad list would be Ming talking to Gordon about having his own kingdom, having everything he wants. It literally, it, it was, it was a, it was a, it's side, straight from the Bible. It was a side by side comparison of Satan tempting Jesus on the rock. I mean, for me, I, I was sitting there just going, why don't you just say, I am Satan, Ming? Come on. I mean, me even more red. Yeah. So again, we're not saying it's. With a black skull cap. 
<laughs> we're not saying that, you know, religion and movies is terrible. We're just saying, just let it be a guy trying to save the world and other worlds from, it doesn't have to be Christ related, but there's just too many similarities. Like, yeah. if you would have had one thing, okay, that's one thing. But when you have these continuous, continuous things that you can actually, like you said, side by side with the Bible, it's just like, what? Uh, what? Yeah. I mean... But, you know, hey, we digress on this one. We, we, can, go on, we can go on this forever like said, and ever being, ca ever. being Catholics, you know, there's a lot of that around. So, I mean, whatever. A lot of guilt. <laughs> We've done, I mean... We've done penance. Let's put it that way. So, number one, on the bad side of Flash Gordon, <laughs> Ming's death. Now, I'm not the complete familiar with the entire comic strip Neither of I. Flash Gordon. Neither However, I. I've seen enough snippets through old, you know, um, photo books and whatnot, whether from my own family or my friends' families, of the original 1939 comic strip. There have been moments where you see Flash Gordon and Emperor Ming sword fight. They have battles all over the galaxy. In this, there's not even a battle. Ming raises his hand. Whenever he fights, he just raises his hand his power and does everything. Yeah, and when the after the air battle in this film near the end of the movie, uh, the ship crashes through Ming's fortress, yeah. and it impales him. Pretty much. And it was just like, ah, what the hell? And then as Flash Gordon gets out, he pulls out his sword, getting ready to basically decapitate the son of a bitch. And Ming turns his power ring on himself and disintegrates himself, you know? And he's just sitting there going, man, what the... We, we wasted like an hour and a half just to see Max von Sydow commit suicide. Oh, that's the thing, though, too. Mm. The question marks, is he really dead or did he just teleport himself? Yeah, but... So that's the whole question about, like we said earlier, with the... Is it, is it really the end? Yeah, I mean, the, the, so the, anyway, the ending was very anticlimactic. It's just one I of those mean, movies. granted, there was a happy ending, you know, Dale and... Flash are together. Zarkov gets his own little hero status. Uh, Baron and Aura are together, and they're basically going to rule the entire kingdom of Mongo. It's just one of those things where, like, uh, you expect the villain to either die or you know he got away. You really don't know what happened to him. No. And like I said, I mean, that just, it bothers me. It's it's one of those open-ended stories is this that, basically what that, that shouldn't with, have been open-ended. This is pretty much what happened. They made the movie, weren't sure if they were going to get to make another one, so they left it that way, like, is it over? Studio, studio, are we going to make another movie? Do we get the money? Uh, and again, like we said, it's a, a cult classic, which means it wasn't that good for most people. It didn't it start drawing, you know, as people, time went on, more and more people like, oh, you should check this movie out. It wasn't, a, you know, a smash hit right when it came no. out. So this is why it did not get a sequel. But in all fairness, we still love it for what it is, and we're not taking anything oh, else no. because we still have five good things that definitely redeem the bad side. Oh yeah. All right. So we're gonna go with the opening is our number five on the good side, and the reason why is it kind of shows you a bunch of comic strips, you know, about Flash Gordon. Like throughout the years, you have like black and white ones, you have color ones. And the whole time, too, you have, you know, Flash Gordon theme song sung by Queen going oh, on. Yeah. So it just you're, you're adds, pumped. it's you're getting pumped. you pumped for it. I mean, just the whole bass, doom, 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 doom. It's awesome. It gets you pumped to watch the movie. Mm -hmm. And right. then, you know, it's just like you're seeing parts of the the movie. You're seeing the comic strip. Well, now just, and, and even when it shows the, the cast find, listing, they zoom out. It's like it starts close up and then their name's... Shoot out like out into space. It just—it's really cool. Yeah, it, it got so, me I mean, pumped. I'm saying, if a movie can get you that pumped when it starts, you know it's going to be good because it's trying to get your attention for it, and it worked. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I mean, you watch that with the music combined with the visual things that you're seeing. It's just like, yeah, fuck it, Flash Gordon, you kick that ass. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. So number four on the good side of Flash Gordon would be the brainwashing of Doctor Han Zarkov, as we mentioned earlier in the summary of the movie. Hans Arkoff is being placed into a little quarantined area in one of Ming's laboratories where he's going to be brainwashed to become one of his little secret agents. As this is going on, his brain is being probed of all of his memories. And you see from the last moment that he was on Earth with Munson all the way up until his basically birth. his birth, 
And in between these moments, you get to see a little more of Zarkov than we actually would. It's, you know, it's nice, actually, because you get a little it, bit of it's, history It's, it's nice, but disturbing. You get to see why he is how he is. You see um, a woman named uh, Myrta, I believe it's his wife, who actually drowns in a pool because they're all having fun and she gets pushed in. And then they kind of place a towel over her body because obviously she drowns. And then you also get to uh, notice that whether he was an adult or a child during this memory, it took place during the Holocaust. And you see clips of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. And Clytus, you know, means right hand man, says, oh, that guy had potential, just to show you how bad they are. Yeah, but and it just, it's it just kind so of goes, It makes more sense then now why he says, you know, he was willing to sacrifice himself for the billions of people. Yeah. He's and, already went but, through something like but this. But, I mean, even still, the whole fact that, as you mentioned, showing how Clytus and Ming themselves are evil, saying that Hitler showed potential, they are relishing in some of the worst memories that Zarkov ever had. And we as an audience have to sit there and witness it firsthand, what he was going through. But he says, though, too, he, that's his mind's all he has. He's, and that's the good thing about him, too, as a character. Because later on in the film, you find out he's supposed to be brainwashed. He's able to break the brainwashing, not because of the bad memories, because of a good memory. He was Hearing a Beatles song, yeah. thinking of his mother. Reciting the Talmud, reciting Shakespeare, so everything. So that's kind of a little nod to all of us. You know, mm -hmm. We all go through bad times. We all have those bad, bad things. Because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. But we all do have those bad, bad memories that you know we haunt us. But just remember, he proved it. Hold on to those good memories because they can save you. They saved him. Exactly. Number three on the good side, the battles. I mean... Like I said, we couldn't decide where we put the football one, so we'll kind of add it in there. But, like, you know, Prince Baron versus Flash, awesome fights. Yeah. I mean, it was really cool. You got to see some sword fighting going on, and Flash for never using... Well, actually, they, they, it wasn't a sword fight. They, 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 they had, fought with whips. They had whips, that's right. That was cool. And, uh, and on a platform above complete outer and then, space. You know, like we said, uh, spikes were coming up out of remote control. Spikes were coming up. The platform keeps on shifting, so you have to be very observant. So it was a cool fight, especially like the choreography was really good. It actually, you believe it's real. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next battle we want to talk about is the air battle. Like, yeah. I, the, mean, I mean, epic. It's awesome. Like we said, I mean, the special effects for this time period were amazing. Yeah, I mean, they used a lot of green screen, which it worked. I mean, mm -hmm. it was really cool. I mean, you have all the Hawkmen. Well, yeah, and I mean, we're going to definitely get into that as well. I mean, if you think about it, um, this movie was also uh, produced by Dino De Laurentiis. The me um, Dino De Laurentiis was known for producing whether animated films or even live action films. Two in particular that are near and dear to my heart. Animated wise was Transformers the movie, the original animated film. 1985, guys. Mm -hmm. And Army of Darkness. Yeah. So... That kind of says something, especially going from 1980 to 1985, all the way up until about 1991, 1992, give or take. So anyways, guys, we just want to say, like, for the time period, the fights all looked good. The effects looked really good. Check it out. I mean, if you disagree with us again, that's why we have comments down below. Use them. Yeah. So number two on the good side, we talked about it earlier, our favorite character, Voltan. Now... Again, he's just funny. From the first time you meet him when he's knocking out Ming's guys with his mace, you know, and laughing about it under his breath, you find that you, first when you meet him, you kind of think he's kind of an asshole a little bit. Yeah. Just because, you know, he just cares about his people and stuff. He's trying to fight the other prince to prove that his people are superior. But then you find out he's got a heart. The whole reason he's acting like this is Ming had his daughter. Yeah. You find So you find out about that, and you, he finally gets her back, and that's when they decide, you know, they should team up and... He leads the charge right against Ming. I mean, it's probably the most quoted scene from the movie. Dive. And another one that I like is after everybody flees from Voltan's air fortress, Flash Gordon survives and contacts Voltan and says, let's, you know, team up. And Voltan's like, my thanks to you. He's like, what for? And he says... For giving a dumb old bird a second chance. It's just like that. So that shows that he's not redemption. set in his ways. He can be redeemed. And I said, and of course, you know, when he said dive, I mean, just the other line is, who wants to live forever? And he just realizes how much of a badass he really is. So, yeah, he's a cool character. He's Like I said, he's probably my favorite character. I can't speak for the wild man here, but... I, I love I love Definitely Voltaire. my favorite character. I actually wrote... Uh, I would actually like to see a movie just with him. 
I actually was about to say, um, about seven years ago when I first moved here, I was writing down some ideas of uh, a little sideshow or like a little you know, thing to do for, for YouTube even. It's called uh, Voltan the Ultimate Wingman, where he helps people that are, you know, completely striking out in the dating scene. So, well, ladies I and mean, gentlemen, I already have scripts written for this, so... We might have... Yeah. That might be a future episode. Like we said, we're going to be getting into movies soon, guys. And I have to admit, I think I've already found my perfect Voltan for this one. Guess what? You've been cast. So, just saying. <laughs> All right. Well, four down, one to go. The number one part. So number one on the good side, Flash Gordon. The effects. And when I say effects, I'm going through everything. Visual and audio. I mean, the set pieces. The costumes. special effects, the costumes, the music, obviously. We've talked about this like so I said, much. You want, to make a, you want to make a movie better? You have Queen do the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. And what I loved about the, the visual effects, whether it, you know, the costumes, the, the set... And even, you know... It looks the, straight from the comic strips. Well, not just that, but I mean, it looks like something you could have on a live stage. Like a live performance in front of an audience. It, it's, it goes up into the, like, the realm of, like, Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah, regardless of those overtones. No, I mean, but similar to, like, that, or even Tommy's the... Or, I mean, the Who's Tommy. Yeah. You know, it, it's a rock opera. That's exactly what this was, especially when you've got a band like Queen just playing music throughout the... I mean, if you actually... I own... The soundtrack of uh, Flash Gordon on LP, and if you play it, you hear the uh, the lines from the movie along with the music. I mean, it's straight up that music is going on throughout the entire film, and it's just awesome. It gets you set in the mood. It makes you happy. It makes you angry. It makes you sad. It's just put it this way: if you were just watching the movie minus the uh, the music, it's a watchable movie. But yeah, the sound. You feel, like he was saying, you feel you those become, emotions. You become you, emotionally you're involved. You're ingrained in the story. Mm -hmm. and you're invested. That's how you make a good movie. You want your people to watch it. You want them to feel what your characters are feeling. Yeah, I mean, exactly. that's how you make a good movie. And like I said, this is a great movie. I think a lot of people don't give it a chance because, oh, it's yeah, from the 80s, a it's lot of folky. People, a lot of people don't. Give it. it a chance. I mean, I think the best thing about coming out of Ted was a lot of people went and saw this. Yeah. One of my best friends, actually, our little brother, Dylan. Ah, Dylan! We got him into this movie. Uh, I miss that kid. I miss that because kid. Because of Ted. He saw Ted with... I remember taking him to see Ted in the theater. He's like, what's Flash Gordon? I'm like, I must teach you. Yeah. So I let him borrow my copy of Flash Gordon. Fucking kid loved it. Ooh, that doesn't make you proud. You, you just kind of go... Yeah. One day, one day I'll be a father. I'm going to pass this knowledge along. Until then... I gotta do it with my friends and my brothers. Yep, amen to that. So, well, that being said, that's gonna In be closing, yeah. guys. Before we finish, though, I want to say we shot a couple things for my birthday um, pre last week. Uh, we we partied a little too hard, so we only shot like a couple things. And not just that, but the uh, the, weather the weather was pretty bad. Ass. And while I was trying to plug in my DJ equipment, we, we blew yeah fuses. we blew a few. So so we had to cut the the video a little short, but we'll probably add at least my birthday present from this guy in because oh yeah it's hilarious. We stay tuned after the credits. I'm going to actually have like a little bit of a you know a we'll recap. Have, we'll we'll put that in because like we said, we shot the opening. And then, um, just a couple other like I said, things. the weather was bad, so a lot of people didn't show up till the weather got better. So, which just, was not until like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. I already had to leave because I was <laughs> three shades away from so it was so. a good time. Um, I consumed like you know 46 beers and then I finished a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, I do a record. Way to raise the bar, dad. <laughs> oh, no, no, the first year, my first birthday here, actually. That year, I killed it. So anyway, guys. If only we had videotape for that one. Anyway, guys, I'm not condoning drinking that much alcohol because you will die. But he's not denying it. I'm not either. But drinking that much alcohol, you probably will die. I'm a special case. I'm not normal. Yeah, you're a special head case. <laughs> <laughs> so please don't say that, oh, well, this guy did it, so I can do it. Don't do that. No. If you, I mean, if you can do it, good for you. Me and you will get together and drink. But please, please do not try to do it and blame me Kids, for it. do not try this at home. Yes, that's it says at the beginning of our show. Don't. don't. Viewer, viewer discretion advised. I don't want to kill anybody. Uh, I don't want anybody drinking and driving, none of that stuff. Be safe. If you are going to consume that much, do it at your house like me. This way you can just fall down the stairs and you're, in, you're safe. Yeah. Well, that's going to be concluding our episode on Flash Gordon. Until next time, I'm Wild Man Wes. And I'm the Big Bad Wolf Benning. And we'll see you next time on the Wild Wolf Show. How?
What's going on guys? Welcome to the Wild Wolf Show. This is a very special episode. It's actually my birthday today. Now, I don't know if you can tell, it's a little rainy out, but if you're a party animal like me, we don't let this stop us. No way. We, we keep going through. We're like gladiators. Are you not entertained? We're very entertained. We're very So entertained. anyway, guys, we're going to be shooting at my house all day today. Uh, we're going to have beer pong tournament later. We might have some video games going on. And once this rain actually clears up, I'm bringing out my DJ equipment. He's and back. And we're going to sing some karaoke. He's DJ back. Wild Man West is back. For a limited time only, folks. Anyway, guys, I just want you guys to know, today's a special episode for me. My birthday is the biggest day of the year for me. Wolf Fest 2017 is on hand. We've been doing this now for three years. This is the first year it's been crappy out. That's okay. Me and God had a deal. He broke it. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm drinking out of my beer bong today. Uh, yeah. Fit about 10 beers in here. Uh, I'm going to be trash tonight. So if later on in the episode I'm doing something stupid or like he's drunk, I am. Don't worry, I'll have the Sharpie pens ready. <laughs> and guys, if you can't see my pocket, I'm loaded with cigars, so we might be doing a little cigar reviews in here too. Yeah, so and it's a twofer. And later on, don't be shy, stay tuned, because he's going to get his birthday present from yours truly. I am, I'm excited. Anyway guys, thanks for joining me on my birthday. We hope to see you guys soon. You know, like, subscribe, share, comment, do everything. Uh, throw me a happy birthday. I'll give you a shout out on our next episode. That's As right. always, guys, I'm the Big Bad Wolf Benny. And I'm the Wild Man Wes. We'll see you later. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna give Benny Boy here his special gift. I have to go get it out of the car, so just sit tight. One minute. By the way, guys, if you're wondering, four. Four. All right, my here, you, here you are, Benny. My gift to you. Oh, shit. I got spaghetti, that's because I'm Italian. I got wine, again, because I'm Italian. I got a stogie. I'm Italian. I got a little cap gun. I, I don't know what he's trying to say, maybe because Italians are... Polish. Gangsters. Gangsters? Yeah, we'll go with that. I got a DVD. Ooh. Oh, a CD. A CD, bootlegs of Frank Sinatra compilation. The Italian thing, guys, it just comes into play. I don't know what to tell you. Seasoning. Read, read exactly what it is. Chopped garlic. Oh, God. Because yeah. I don't get enough garlic at work. Yeah. Ooh, some prego, some meat sauce. Yeah. A couple rounds of caps for the gun. You gotta hook a brother up. I mean, one round ain't gonna do. <laughs> oh, I got a signed picture of Bruno San Martino. The longest reigning WWE champion of all time. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, That's cool. Italian. Italian? Italian. Yeah, goddamn. Hair jokes? You know, my hair. <laughs> Combs? Again, Italian. It just goes back to being Italian. It's kind of getting racist now. All right. <laughs> I got a gold chain out of a quarter machine. And uh, we're going for the Mario kick here. Uh, Got the mustachios going on. God damn, there's still more. And then, guys, I mean, come on. What Dago, what Dago cannot have wife beaters? Some Dago t-shirts. That's what I got too, guys. There's, so, there's one more thing. There's one more thing. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Put those back in there. Uh-oh. We made you a racist gift basket. You can't refuse. <laughs> Happy birthday, Benny! <laughs> you crazy wop! <laughs> How can you argue with that? 
Oh, hope so, you enjoyed it as much as we did. So guys, I don't know if you can tell from this. I have Italian in my blood. I don't know what to tell you. All right. So let's get back to the party. <laughs>